So good morning, everybody, and thank you all for joining us for this virtual information session on Automation Alley's PPE Resilience Grant Program for Macomb County Manufacturers. So I'm Tom Kelly. I'm the Automation Alley Executive Director and CEO, and I'm pleased to be here today along with Vicki Rad. She's the Director of the Department of Planning and Economic Development for Macomb County. She's also a great cheerleader for Automation Alley and all things Industry 4.0. Uh, and she's just a great friend and, uh, and supporter. And uh, we're happy to have her with us to talk about this cool program. So we're gonna share details of what it is with this grant program that, that we're gonna be doing. And I believe, and I think you may believe this too, and we're all done, that it has the potential to be truly transformative for not just Macomb County manufacturers, but our entire region. So the goal of this grant program, which we've dubbed Project Diamond, and I think you're going to find that it's a diamond, is to build a distributed, independent, agile, manufacturing on-demand network. Diamond. So that's why we call it that. For personal protective equipment, often referred to as PPE, uh, which you may have heard, with up to 50 of the county's small and medium-sized manufacturers. So along with manufacturers from Oakland County, you will help us create Project Diamond to fight the COVID-19 pandemic and future pandemics without having to rely on other nations to produce critical PPE for our healthcare workers, hospitals, first responders, or residents. So this pandemic you know, has brought to light the urgent need to move Macomb County and our entire state into the Industry 4.0 era. This grant program will position our region as a digital first manufacturing hub that is resilient, agile, and ready for any future disruptions that may occur in our manufacturing uh, centers. We encourage you to join us on this digital journey, and I think you're going to want to after you hear what we can do. You know, we know many of you have reached out and shown interest, and I appreciate the demand we've, we've seen so far. And many of you have questions about whether your company qualifies to receive these industry 4.0 state-of-the-art digital technologies. We want you to ask questions. There's a little Q&A box below you or above you, whatever software version you're on for Zoom. Hit that Q&A box, ask a question as you're hearing what's happening here today um, so that we can, we can make sure to answer them. We'll, uh, we'll try and drill down as deep as we can on program details. So with that, I thank you all again for being here this morning. I'm now going to turn it over to Vicki Rad, uh, as I said, the Director of the Department of Planning and Economic Development for Macomb County, uh, and she's going to give you some more information from the county's perspective. Thanks, Vicki. You got it. Thank you, Tom. Um, you know, it, this is actually a really uh, crazy time, not only for Macomb County, but for the entire state and actually our country. You know, we're, we're battling two things here. One is a health crisis uh, with this COVID-19, and the other is a economic development crisis. And we were looking at just the sheer impact uh, that this has had on our businesses throughout the county. Um, I, I'm going to talk a little bit about the county. Interestingly enough, the PowerPoint presentation that I have today, um, pre-COVID-19, we talked about targeted industries, goals, our strategy. Uh, we definitely had to pivot. And so I really want to talk more about, you know, the impact COVID-19 has had on some of our targeted industries, but where we see an opportunity for growth, an opportunity for our also pivot into some of these critical areas. But in order to do so, I, you know, there's a slogan, you know, don't necessarily work harder, work smarter. And this opportunity partnering with Automation Alley gives us that opportunity to work with our manufacturers to get us in a place where we now have a centralized system in the event that we have to ramp up fairly quickly again, uh, we can do so. So if you wanna go ahead and just go ahead, next slide. That's myself, um, the director, our team of 17 in the office. We've been really, really busy uh, responding to a lot of our, our business needs. Um, probably more busy this year than ever before. Uh, you know, typically our, our targeted industries, we, we focus on nine key areas, but we found with this, uh, with this particular pandemic, uh, some of our smaller businesses, you know, about 18,000 businesses make Macomb their home. Um, but a lot of our, our food, our restaurants, our service, professional service industries definitely felt the impact. Uh, and they're also having to pivot. 
Um, and so as I mentioned, you know, our strategy is looking at each one of these targeted industries, and I can tell you every single one of these businesses has been impacted by COVID-19. Uh, if we go back to March, uh, what we initially saw there as we were seeing that increase in uptick of hospitalizations, the need for PPE definitely increased. Uh, there was some greater awareness that maybe perhaps we have to do a better job manufacturing these products within the United States, within our borders. And we know that we have that talent as well as the equipment and technology here in the state of Michigan to make that happen. Um, I was telling some of the individuals on the call earlier, you know, some of those early days in March, we're just trying to find manufacturers who could pivot and make products for the healthcare industry. Um, and so when we look at our targeted industries, you know, a lot of those conversations were with advanced manufacturing, uh, those that had the equipment that they could quickly turn on, uh, on a dime, uh, stop what they're doing uh, to meet the needs. Automotive, we definitely saw how automotive pivoted uh, to produce ventilators and, and face shields, uh, parts for medical equipment that, um, that's not their area of expertise, but they were able to do so and successfully. However, you know, we're reaching that point where it's like, there's actually a market here. Uh, there's just some sustainability to that model. Um, and defense, you know, these three industries, advanced manufacturing, automotive, and defense, all were deemed essential um, when we look at the businesses that had to remain open during the pandemic. And they continue to remain essential because of their core, uh, core technologies. Uh, for us, we, we know these businesses, uh, you know, you're the heart of, of what you, you do here in Macomb County. And so if we can find a way for you to continue doing what you do, uh, it'll be phenomenal and, and great for all of us. Um, IT cybersecurity. I'm going to go back to the, the idea with Zoom. Initially, there's a lot of hacking that was happening with some of those Zoom calls. Um, cybersecurity is going to remain prevalent, especially as we're going to a more remote workplace uh, where everything is actually held somewhere in a cloud digitally. Uh, food and ag. Uh, this is another area where robotics and automation are very important for our supply chain. And it becomes an, an issue of national security if we don't have food readily available for the people that live in our communities. Um, health, that is the big elephant in the room when we talk about this pandemic, uh, the needs that we saw with the healthcare industry. Uh, they definitely put a call out saying, we need these products and services and, and these products cannot necessarily all come from one particular region of, of the world that we've got to look more internal with that. Uh, logistics, the movement, um, Truck drivers were essential, and they continue to remain essential, getting those groceries to our, our stores. Uh, the logistics warehousing actually is a big area of growth in Macomb County. Professional services, this is kind of the heart of where it all happens. This is our engineering uh, expertise. Um, and then retail, uh, it's one of our spin-off industries, but we saw with this, especially with some of the executive orders that came through, our retail industry has to pivot. It's not necessarily all about face-to-face. Uh, product buying, uh, but using e-commerce and different ways to get their product into the hands of the consumer uh, require us for, for us to think differently by uh, utilizing some technology. Go ahead and go to the next slide. And so when we talk about manufacturing in Macomb County, you know, one of our biggest growth areas actually falls in this category, advanced manufacturing. Um, it's, it's a long word, but this is where automation falls in. This is where robotics comes into play. Uh, the sheer number of job growth, the job opportunity, those are still a reality. Uh, in fact, when we talk to our manufacturers, one of the hardest things or challenges that they're facing today is finding talent. Uh, that conversation has not been lifted off the table. In fact, it has grown exponentially. Go ahead, next slide. Automotive, uh, you know, there's definitely a lot happening in automotive manufacturing, but then we're also seeing automotive transform into technology with the advancement of mobility, uh, driverless cars, uh, touchless, uh, contactless, humanless technologies that are happening within uh, the vehicle. Uh, so there's definitely some job growth in that space. Uh, and, and for us, we look at those average earnings when we talk about how do you grow an economy. Um, prosperity is one of the areas of interest for us. And, and part of that does look at that the wage earnings uh, that happen within that industry. Go on to the next slide. And then defense, you know, in Macomb County, we are a major hub for uh, both vehicle, ground vehicle technology, as well as space. Uh, we're, we're pursuing some major programs in the Space Force, which is a big deal for us when we look at how, how do we connect 
land, air, and sea. Um, so there's some great connectivity happening there. But you know, if you pull back the layers, ultimately um, it's the technology that's driving all of this, which is some dual use, whether it's inside of a vehicle, whether it's inside of an F-35, or if we're looking at um, some space command technology. Go ahead and on to the next slide. And then as I mentioned, IT cybersecurity, uh, this is an area of, of significant growth. And I think you'll hear from the presenters today um, how the backbone is really how all this operates in, in the background. You know, there's, there's the user interface, but then there is a lot of technology that not only protects the data that, that's going back and forth between um, cloud applications, but ensuring that there's a, a level of security uh, and that our, our businesses are meeting the demands to make sure that their data is secured. It does become an issue of national security uh, that we have to make sure that we elevate the, the level of cybersecurity. Um, and with that comes the workforce, the, the individuals who are actually driving and creating that technology. Uh, this is a, a an area of great growth for us as well. Go on to the next slide. And with that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pass it on to, to hear about Project Diamond, which I absolutely love the name of this program. I, but I, before I, I pass the baton on, you know, I wanna you know, interject that some of the earlier conversations we had in Macomb County, um, as we were looking and transforming and pivoting because of COVID-19, that we've gotta do something differently. Uh, and part of that is reaching out to our, our businesses that actually are boots on the ground and making things happen. We were fortunate in Macomb County that we did receive an allocation through the CARES Act, the Federal CARES Act, uh, where we are able to provide funding for very unique projects. Uh, one, one thing we did do was pull together an economic recovery task force to hear from the specific industries and those that represent those industries to hear, you know, where are some specific needs where we can help out as county government, we've got the, the, these federal dollars and what rose to the top is the assistance for our manufacturers to pivot. And, and so uh, with that, Automation Alley did put forth a, a fantastic proposal, uh, which I wanna say it's glowing, um, but it absolutely is what we need in, in Macomb County and throughout Southeast Michigan. When we look at some of the, the early pain points when we were trying to find our manufacturers to just manufacture P PPE, it was very difficult. It was a huge lift for us. And so with this partnership, we're able to take a step back and organize, uh, bring in the right partners, uh, but not only just pivot, but actually grow and expand. And so I don't want to take too much of the, the thunder away from the other partners, but I think you're going to hear today um, how this project, Project Diamond, um, is really innovative and it really provides an opportunity for our manufacturers to step in the gap and get involved and uh, there's funding. And so with that, I will pass the baton back to you, Tom. Thanks, Becky. So uh, I'm going to introduce uh, the two people that are heading up this project, uh, being led by our Chief Operating Officer, Pavan Mazumdar, and Matt Townsend, who's the Managing Director of Conway McKenzie, part of Riveron, uh, who has deep experience in, uh, in manufacturing and 3D printing. Uh, and I'll let Matt take it away from here to talk about Project Diamond. Perfect, Tom. Thank you, thank you, Vicki, Pavin. Hey, Tom, seeing as some people look like they joined a little bit late, now that you physically have the word Diamond on the screen, why don't you reiterate what that acronym stands for? So Project Diamond stands for Distributed, Independent, Agile, Manufacturing On Demand. And Matt is gonna dive deep into what that means and why we think this is something that is truly revolutionary on a global scale and how we need your help to say, can we put the pieces in place where Project Diamond can actually become a reality for Macomb County manufacturing? And uh, Matt, take it away. Yeah, thanks, Tom. Exactly. So not only am I privileged to be part of this group, but it's, uh, it, it's almost a patriotic duty. So can you flip over to the next slide, please? So, uh, I put the American flag and a watermark behind this slide because we all know that the world today is different than it was six months ago. And when the, when the pandemic first started being an additive leader in the country, it, you know, we stood up and we put our hands up and we said, how can we help and how can we help as quickly as humanly possible without really knowing what we were doing? Uh, dealing with Ford, GM, a, a bunch of other people trying to make ventilator parts, do whatever we could to help the country out. 
And then when Tom approached me with, with this idea, the fact that putting a backbone into Michigan so that Michigan can stand on its own and says, wait a minute, we're going to put all of our manufacturers in Oakland and Macomb County up, put your hands up and say, hey, what can I do to make a difference? And so thank you, Vicki, for putting money forward to, for, this, for this operation. And so what we want to do is we want to put agile 3D printing and light guide systems for assembly and manufacturing into the hands of the manufacturers of Michigan. Uh, next slide, please. And so if we talk about additive first, and then we'll flip over to light guide second. So you may be asking yourself, what, what is additive manufacturing? It's basically the opposite of subtractive. So normal, traditional manufacturing, I'm going to take a block of steel, or I'm going to take some kind of a steel, and I'm going to rip it apart and turn it into something. Well, this is the exact opposite. So we're going to develop, build, design, whatever, and turn around and use building blocks, kind of like Lego, and build it into something. So 3D printing has been around for a million years, at least 30 for fun. But now we have the ability to manufacture 3D printing with strength. And then on top of it, as we build our agile network, we now have the ability to build them at scale. So where 3D printing used to take a few hours to print something, so if you wanted to print you know, a handful of parts that may take weeks, now on this distributed network, we could turn around and print something in hours across multiple manufacturers. Next slide, please. So you may question yourself, how is this actually going to work? So basically, we have a digital inventory that we are going to use on an everyday life as part of anything you need. Maybe it's a tool, maybe it's a fixture, maybe it's whatever. It doesn't really matter. We can call it a widget for today. And then all of a sudden, something happens where the government says, hey, guys, we need our PPE. And so our digital inventory basically disappears. And the new PPE digital inventory steps over top. Everybody gets a page, basically, a page text, email, whatever the distribution network might be in your facility, and bam, all of the infrastructure all of a sudden starts printing PPE that will be distributed then as an emergency response network. Unbelievable. Can't believe it's actually happening, but it is a fantastic network. Now, that is what we are all here for. But in the background, phase two, or the diversification of the network, we now have the ability to use that network for profit or for gain. So now I am GM, Ford, Chrysler, whoever it might be, and I need 300, 500, 600 additively built parts, I can put that out into the network and distribute it across all the printers. Say there's 300 printers in the network, bam, in two hours, we got 600 parts. Unbelievable. Next slide, please. So the platform itself is basically distributed a couple of different things. One is the material it's used from, which will be a source of either metal or onyx or carbon fiber or whatever the actual product might be. And then we use an enterprise software behind it. You know, Vicki was talking earlier about how does all this stuff, we have a user interface that we use, but there is a severe amount of, of engineering that goes on in the background. And so you wanna talk about the digital inventory and it is encrypted metadata. So when we know we have that PPE that's sitting in the, in the lock vault, let's call it, when it moves to the printers, it's not touched by human hand, nor can it be manipulated. So it is secure, encrypted, and basically exactly the same in every single location. Uh, next slide, please. So how does, uh, how does 3D printing get adapted? Like I had mentioned before, it was, it was here forever that we used to use for prototyping. Then approximately five, six years ago, all the patents basically that were originally distributed way back when became available to be modified and changed. And so everybody got on board and said, here, how can we make this for, uh, for a better or for more agile manufacturing for tomorrow? And evolution over time, it's gone from very, very small to now a mainstay in, in, in most of the large manufacturing facilities around the country and around the world. Uh, next slide, please. And so, Kind of as life moves over the last five years, it went from a very, very small volume of parts that was used to you can see off of the Mark Forge printers, which will be part of this initial phase one, has printed basically, you know, 24 million parts over the last few years, a staggering growth rate. And we believe that putting these tools into the manufacturing hands of uh, the people of Michigan will change the way manufacturing is done, not only locally, but around the world. Uh, next slide. So basically, how can you help yourself basically transform the way you do business today 
um, using either an additive machine or a light guide machine. And I'm going to pass it off to Chris to kind of briefly uh, talk about how light guide and, and agile manufacturing works. Yeah, and Matt, I also want to introduce Paul yeah. Reisnard. Paul was, uh, wasn't sure if he was going to join us or not. Paul's the CEO oh, and founder of Op Solutions, and I see he's on. Uh, maybe he can uh, say a quick hello and then uh, do the presentation himself or turn it over to Chris. Chris has been uh, pinch hitting for Paul wonderfully with us on this whole project. But Paul, I'll let you start. Yeah, thanks a lot, Tom. And apologize for being a minute late. Uh, as everybody knows, there's a little bit of a lightning storm coming through our area right now, and a bolt hit right outside of my window here. So sorry for the delay. But uh, but yeah, great to have everybody online. Chris will go through the light guide augmented reality overview for everybody. And it's been just a pleasure working with uh, Macomb County, Oakland County, and Automation Alley so far on this exciting project. So I'll just turn it over to Chris and uh, let him go through our overview. Great, thanks, Paul. Yeah, great to be here, and thanks again to uh, to Vicky and uh, the team at Automation Alley, Tom, Bob, and, and everyone. Uh, we're very, very proud and very pleased to be a part of such an important initiative. So on behalf of Paul and the entire Light Guide Systems team, we do make our home right here in Southeast Michigan, um, and, and we're, we're just so pleased to be a part of this program. Um, so you may be wondering, uh, what exactly is augmented reality and, and how can it help me uh, in, in my business or your manufacturing place. Um, so a lot of us may have a preconceived notion of augmented reality as these futuristic glasses or goggles. Um, in fact, light guide systems is a very practical projected form of augmented reality. And you can see that in some of the pictures on this slide. We'll share a few videos with you. Um, but Paul and, and the team here at light guide have, have invented, uh, patented, commercialized light guide systems for really for industrial strength augmented reality manufacturing. And, and that means we can help drive uh, really on demand flexibility in, in any kind of a complex manual manufacturing environment, right? Um, projected augmented reality work instructions will replace old fashioned uh, paper work instructions or even monitor based work instructions, some systems uh, many of you may may have have seen or deployed into your environments. Um, we all know about paper, uh, but but augmented reality will help drive key operational improvements, help drive productivity, quality improvements, training effectiveness, and again, really give you that kind of on-demand capability that this program is is designed around, right? Uh, and it, it's just um, you know it's a Industry 4.0 technology, it will be very complimentary if you're already deploying or might deploy as a part of this program, 3D printers, because 3D printers might be able to print out subcomponents with augmented reality, uh, with a light guide system, we can walk you through the actual manufacturing and final assembly of those components into the final product. Um, next slide, please. You'll see a, just a quick slide here on our footprint, again, uh, headquartered in, in Wixom right here in Southeast Michigan, um, a global presence. We do have our, our team uh, in the EU, in the European Union based in the Czech Republic and our team in Asia Pacific based outside of Shanghai in Suzhou, China. Um, and, you know, uh, a global presence meeting we've deployed to over, uh, we've got to update the slide here, 30 countries, um, 200 plus customers, hundreds of, of light guide systems coming up on, on, on thousands really. Uh, but, you know, I will say that, uh, our, you know, we're born and bred here in Southeast Michigan, which means a very strong footprint in automotive and aerospace and defense and uh, advanced manufacturing, heavy equipment, um, all of those key industries that Vicki talked about um, that are so important to Macomb County. Next slide, please. So we're going to show you a couple of videos. This first video is our own CTO, Will Somerville, uh, at work. This is our desk top version of light guide systems. And you can see um, we're, we're making a mask, right? We answered the call um, just as soon as we all understood the seriousness of, of the COVID pandemic. And we went right to work, um, as they say, with, with our own tools. And, and we put our team and talent to work here uh, making face masks. We made hundreds of masks. We delivered those to um, to uh, retirement communities, uh, elder homes, um, places that maybe were not so able to readily put their hands on 
on PPE, personal protective equipment. Uh, and again, you can see here with a light guide system and, a, and just a simple home sewing machine, um, you know, we had a distributed network up and running in a few days across all of our light guide team members, uh, several of them. And uh, we were able to produce hundreds of masks and those immediately went to those most in need. So uh, it fits perfectly with the theme here of, of Project Diamond and, and the intent and spirit of this, this program. So that's one form factor, a desktop version of light guide systems. Um, next slide, and we'll show you um, another form factor, a standard workbench. Uh, and you can see the overhead projector, side-by-side -side touch screen monitors, and, and a standard uh, workbench surface uh, fits at home in any factory, small or large. Uh, and you'll see it's very intuitive. Um, these immersive graphics are presented. And by the way, mobile, you can roll through a factory, through a training lab, through an office space. Um, and we're all, always about, you know, training uh, first and foremost. So, you know, we train uh, the men and women who might be in your factories building products day in and day out. Um, and, and you can see this is a very immersive, interactive system, whether it's using uh, the touch screen or using soft buttons, these virtual buttons on the tabletop. And we'll guide, guide folks through a step-by-step -step learning process or training event. Uh, after that, of course, we can certify. So the next step is a quiz, a quick uh, quiz to ensure that they've learned and they're properly certified. We issue that certification. And, and as always, because we know that your environment requires flexibility, you know, you're always dealing with a lot of variation on the factory floor. Um, our programming interface is very intuitive, drag and drop. What you see is what you get. Uh, so, you know, we say if you can, if you can program in PowerPoint, make a PowerPoint slide deck, you can, uh, you can author work instructions and like it. I will say as a part of this program, for all of the PPE, whether it be face masks, um, isolation gowns, uh, shields, whatever it might be, um, those work instructions will be pre-authored, right? So we will author those. So as you receive the, the on-demand uh, PPE production uh, opportunity, you'll have work instructions for all the various forms of PPE that you might be asked to produce. And again, uh, just a great opportunity for us to participate. We thank Tom and, uh, and Vicki and the entire team here. Um, Paul, is there anything you might wanna add that I may have missed in the presentation? Yeah, I th thanks, Chris. I would just add that, you know, as you saw in those videos, Light Guide has the ability to empower people to do work, whether it's assembly or inspection, training, whatever that manual process may be. And with unemployment, you know, at over 10% right now in the U.S., it can also be a job creation and a job retention uh, tool to allow people to have gainful employment, whether it's working out of their homes as a part of a home-based manufacturing model or even inside of the factory. So everything that Chris just reviewed really highlights uh, Light Guide's ability to drive dramatic improvements in quality and productivity and uh, even training effectiveness for PPP, PPE, I should say, as well as other, uh, other forms of um, assembly instructions. Thanks, Paul. So guys, I'm gonna jump in here real quick because Lori and Dan just asked a great question. Both of them said, hey, wait a minute, is this some kind of sales pitch? I'm here to learn about grants. And it's a, it's a great question. And the answer is, what we're setting up is a Project Diamond, Distributed Independent Agile Manufacturing On Demand Network to make PPE. To do that, we need everybody, dozens and dozens, if not hundreds of manufacturers, small manufacturers, to have 3D printers or uh, uh, augmented reality assembly stations so that your people can make the kinds of things we need for PPE. What we're talking about in this Project Diamond grant is we will grant you as a manufacturer either a 3D printer of some type or an augmented reality system of some type. We've demonstrated Light Guide Systems as one of the preferred vendors that we want to work with because what we need to be able to do is we need to be able to have distributed independent network systems. So your 3D printer will be there for you to use and be granted to you to make profit. But when we need it to make PPE, we're gonna take that printer over and we're gonna make PPE. That's part of the trade-off of saying, we're going to grant this to you, but we have to grant it in a way where we can make PPE. 
or we're going to grant you a light guide system and you can use it to make your own production parts and train your staff and get them uh, up to speed on what augmented reality is in terms of uh, uh, being able to put products together. But if we need you to make face masks, we're going to ask that you do that. And of course, we'll pay you for all of those things, right? The Macomb County will pay you for the production of that. Uh, but that's what we're trying to build. So hopefully that's a start in terms of answering the question of what is this about? It's about granting you I4O technology that makes you a part of a bigger network that, that can not only make PPE, but when we're not making PPE, we can use you in that network to create parts for anyone at any time for any reason. That's the ultimate goal. That probably won't happen overnight, but that's where we want to get. So uh, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll open it up for questions from the audience or if Matt or Pavan have uh, uh, any ideas uh, or, or uh, uh, things they wanna talk about, I think it's important that we make sure it's very clear what we're asking of our Macomb County manufacturers at this time. That, that's exactly right, Tom. So, so the process that you wanna follow is go to automationalley.com slash PPE grant. There's a form there and fill it out with your details. If you're interested, we'll ask you some questions about your business, we'll ask you some activities, something about your technology, and then what we'll do is we'll kind of figure out what is, what's the best technology for you. Is it a 3D printing technology that makes the best, uh, is the best fit for you, or is it um, uh, light assembly systems? And uh, that's the process our team is going through internally as we're putting this, this network forward. Yeah, and if I can actually add some maybe real life experience, uh, when we go back to the, the start of this pandemic, uh, there was a need for face shields. Uh, so we actually put a call out to our businesses saying, can you make these face shields? And what we got inundated with was, where's the technical drawing? Help me find or source the materials. Um, you know, what is the price point for, for a face shield? Questions that we could not answer. And so when we look at this network where we build it up where, you know, all that information is just handed to the manufacturer so that you can do what you do best and that is manufacture and produce. And, you know, when we look at what that solution is at the end of the day, um, just excited to get this thing rolling. <laughs> so we yeah, don't have those major hiccups that we had, you know, in that March, April timeframe. Yes. And Vicki, I, I, I want to be careful of, of hyperbole, but we, I want to say that we don't believe anyone in the world has built a system like this, where we'll, we will have hundreds of small manufacturers interconnected, able to make and, and function as a large manufacturer, but the independent small manufacturer gets to participate in that profit and look like a big. And our goal is to build this network in a way where it's open and independent. Nobody's trying to control anything, but we're trying to do what Automation Alley does best, which is build the ecosystem that allows us to make money and actually crush the rest of the world in our agility, <laughs> right? And resiliency. That's what we have the potential in front of us. But it's going to take your help. This is not going to be easy. You know, uh, Kennedy said we do uh, that which is hard because it's hard. Not because it's easy, right? We, we, we aspire to get to the moon because it's what we need to do. This is what we need to do in Michigan. This is what Michigan was born to do. And we've been waiting and waiting and watching China eat our lunch for 20 years. Well, guess what? The first domino is about to fall and we are going to build this system. And if you can imagine what this can look like in 18 months, 24 months, whatever we decide together to build, this will change the world if we do it right. It's within our grasp to do but it only works if we all understand the commitment we're taking together to make this happen. And the first test will be, can we push a button and have all the manufacturers in Oakland County all of a sudden start making PPE for a test? And we say, wow, that worked fabulously well. Hello, Walmart. What kind of tchotchkes can we be making in the consumer market? Because we're kind of automotive, but hell, we'd love to take all the business from China. Let's do it. So that's why I'm over the moon excited with what we're trying to do here today. But I gotta tell you, uh, there's a lot of work ahead for all of us. And we want you to roll up your sleeves with us and let's get it done. And let's use this grant as the opportunity to change uh, how we do things in Southeast Michigan. It's really gonna be fun. Hey Tom, before you answer that question, oh, sorry, Pavin. 
Metal yeah. Built um, put a, a notice on there talking about being exciting and a bunch of different things. So while we were talking there, I was just looking at some of the products they supply for the defense industry. And not only will the 3D printers as well as the, as the light guide assembly work well for them, they'll be able to make uh, prototype molds, prototype parts, both in, in onyx carbon fiber as well as metal. So you want to talk about a perfect fit. That company that just popped up their metal belt, if they don't have any 3D printers, then this is going to be an exciting and extremely adventurous and opportunity for them. Metal Bills has already applied, and we have them in our list. So, yes. so uh, Linda, uh, you know, just stay tuned. We will get back to you on this. So, you know, think of all that's the, the first thing you got to do is fill out that form and just participate. Think of all the the parts in the military that aren't really made anymore by the OEMs because they're not profitable for the OEMs to make. And the military has a very difficult time trying to source those parts. Imagine if they had a network that could make really any part they would need at any time. Uh, th th it boggles the mind what's possible. The reason why it's not done today is because they can't herd all the cats. All the printers exist in little silos. And if, if someone has a printer, it's probably because they're doing something with it that makes their economic model go. And if the defense industry shows up, they say, well, I don't want to do that. I'm doing this. If we build a system that says, of course, we want to do that. That's what smalls are built for, to be able to be nimble and agile. And if we build this distributed, independent, agile manufacturing on demand network, it's exactly what we'll be able to do. So it's very, very exciting. Uh, and there is the technology all exists. What we have to do is just sit down as a team and figure out culturally, how do we make this all go? It's not a technological problem. It's a cultural problem to say, I used to do manufacturing that way. Now I need to do manufacturing this way and it's gonna look different, but, but the profit is gonna be the same or better. <laughs> and that's what I wanna get to. It's, it's a new model for how you do manufacturing. There's there's another question and for the guys the match full or partial for a 3D printer. The way it's going to work is you are going to get the 3D printer. It is going to be given to you. It is also going to be uh, included along with it is training on how to use it, how to set it up, so that not only does it meet the needs for the PPE that we've been talking about, but also give you some skills internally for other revenue opportunities, prototyping, etc. That Matt was just referring to. And the whole idea is that this becomes something that you use beyond the, the, the call of duty, so to speak, for the PPE. It is something that actually makes you money, gives you new opportunities, and makes you more of a vibrant business. So what is the amount of the grant available is a question for Marcus and a Marcus Synergy prototype. I don't know if that's a gentleman's name or a company, forgive me, <laughs> but... Uh, uh, the, the, the answer is it's up to $20,000 per company of stuff, of goodies. Uh, and so but that, that's where we all need to get together. We have to decide, Matt and Pavan and, and, and Paul and Chris, what does that product mix look like? What do we, we need so many metal printers. We need so many ABS printers. We need so many printers that can do different things. We need so many light guide systems. And we need to figure out what does that bell curve look like? And then how do we match up with, the community of the kinds of technologies they want to take that are interesting to them that can serve their purposes other than just here's something that's going to collect dust and it only gets used when we have a crisis that's a waste of everything we need to make sure that you're saying man not only do i want to be a part of this to make ppe but i can use this printer tomorrow to do interesting things that generate wealth for me independent of this project and that's when we've we've all won when we can do that yeah, and on top of that, Tom, is there's a lot of companies that don't do any design right now that have always had aspirations to, but didn't really know how to do it. Now you have the ability to potentially design for additive where you don't need to know how something is manufactured. You can design it like whatever you feel and print it and try it. It's, it's really, it, it really becomes an open source to do whatever you want it to do. Or if you don't want to design, you can go out to the internet, grab an open source, uh, an open source product and bring it in and, and convert it. Great, I'm asking, uh, the question from Marcus is, we currently have three freeform powdered metal laser 3D printing systems and laser heat treat cells that we built ourselves under our sister company, uh, Synergy Additive Manufacturing. We can also build all tooling and sheet metal components. We believe we would be a great fit to be involved with this program by adding plastic printing 
and to be connected to the network. So Matt, be aware of that. And awesome. We will have that conversation. Yeah. And I believe Marcus has already applied to the grant, if I'm not mistaken. And I'm such so a new that is the definition. To, uh, when it comes to uh, doing these live events, because I didn't turn my ringer off. So <laughs> at least it wasn't like a TV show, because that, that would be even worse. <laughs> but but you want to talk about the epitome of what this is all about. So, so here we have a, a manufacturer who has systems that are not part of our original network, where mm -hmm. they grab a grant, become on the network, and then add all of the additional capacity that they have. So now the system's now gone from 300 to 303 almost instantaneously. You know, they tell two friends and they tell two friends and so on and so on. Next thing you know, we got 10,000 printers or, or 10,000 things of manufacturing. Mm -hmm. So I don't see any more questions. It is 1140. We, tr we, we, we thought we'd keep this to 45 minutes because we want the ability to take this recording and have our team and Vicki's team spread the word among Macomb County manufacturers that this is something you want to be a part of. Uh, it's going to be a great learning uh, curve uh, ride where, where this whole idea of really truly understanding what's possible in a way that, that can make you, um, can help you be productive immediately with this technology. Uh, whereas in the past, it's been, why would I buy a 3D printer? I don't really know what to do with it. Well, now you do. We're going to put it on our network and we're going to help you drive revenue to that printer. I want, my dream is to have a business owner, a manufacturer owner, look over and say, the printer's going again. I don't know what the hell it's making, but I'm making money. That's what you want to have. And somebody's got to pull it off there and put it in a box and get it to, uh, to the end user, wherever they may reside somewhere around the world. So uh, that's what we're trying to build. And we think we can do it. And we got a great team. If you look around, I feel like I'm on the Brady Bunch, but if you look around <laughs> all these boxes, this is where, this is the, the, the room where it happens, everybody. And we're, we're getting started right now. And once again, automationalley.com slash PPE grant. Vicki, I'll give you the last word. Anything uh, to, to close with? Yes, no, thank you so much for, for being such a, a great partner here. Um, every time I hear more and more about what this network looks like, uh, my head explodes with new ideas. <laughs> yeah. How do we expand the network? You know, when we look at our assets, as I mentioned in, in the beginning of the call, advanced manufacturing, automotive, and defense. Um, having a network that is ready and available to go for emergency preparedness is essential. Um, and so this isn't just about the bottom dollar. Um, there is actually a national security concern. You know, there was the, the National Defense uh, Act that was actually um, executed uh, to make sure that our manufacturers can produce product, but we may not necessarily have to go that route if we already have that network built up. And so we have something great starting here in Southeast Michigan. I'm happy that Macomb is part of this. Uh, if you have any questions, you can always come back to our team at Macomb County or uh, the Automation Alley team. Um, more specific. And this video, someone just asked, this video will be available as a recording shortly after this presentation. It's going to be at automationalley.com forward slash PPE grant. Did I get that right, Pavan? Yes. Okay, that's right, because I'd be just, just me to give you the wrong address. Uh, it'll be there probably within the next hour or two or three or maybe tomorrow, whatever, you know, I'm not the IT people here to, to make sure it gets done, but it will be up very shortly. And th this video, you can send a link to anybody you want. In fact, if you have manufacturing friends who weren't uh, here, make sure they know about it because we have very limited funds and we want you to be a part of the club. This club is going to matter and it's really going to make a change. Get inside the club. Be a part of this ride because it's going to be really fun. Yeah. So thank you, everybody. Thank you, Vicki, Chris, Paul, Matt, and Pavan. Thanks for everything. Uh, um, and for everybody who's tuned in, thank you. Believe in us. We can get this done. And when I mean us, I mean everybody that's, that's listening and watching. Uh, we have to do this. This is how we win globally. And uh, it starts today. So. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Vicki. And we'll see you all later. Take care. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>